Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name's Keith and I'm your host. Today we're talking carbon brushes. What are they, how do they work, and how to maintain them properly. This video is for industrial maintenance technicians or anyone looking to keep their DC motor in tip-top shape. Quick safety note, it's always a good idea to wear safety glasses and steel toes when working with motors. And most importantly, I have the power supply shut off while I'm working on the motor. First, let's discuss what carbon brushes do in electric motor. The brush DC motor uses carbon brushes to bring the current to the rotor to create the magnetic field that causes the motor to spin. The carbon brushes are the bridge between the stationary wires and the spinning apparatus of the motor, sliding along the commutator sections to conduct current. Constant contact between the brushes and the commutator is required for the motor to operate properly. With this in mind, it's important to note that the commutator is not a changeable part of the electric motor, while carbon brushes are. The commutator is copper while the brushes are made of carbon which is softer than the copper to avoid any critical damage. Because the brushes are wearable, checking them should be included in your regular maintenance practices. The amount of wear will depend on how you use your motor. So, how often should you check the brushes on your DC motor? Every three to six months is ideal. The key is to monitor the health and the length of the carbon brushes, so you know when it's time to change them out and avoid unexpected downtime. There are a few symptoms you could run into if you don't replace your brushes before they wear out. The motor will experience performance issues, especially at startup or high RPMs. You could smell a burning smell, or you may experience inconsistent power or no power at all. If inspecting your DC motor brush wear on a regular basis, there are a few things to look for on the brush itself. Brushes should be replaced if they're only a quarter of their original length or one quarter inch. You'll also wanna inspect the brushes for signs of burning, crumbling, or breakage, which all indicate a replacement is needed. And finally, Check the condition of the lead and spring, or clip, holding the brush into place in the motor. Now, we're ready to check the carbon brushes on my 90 volt DC motor. This motor is already removed from its power source and the equipment it's powered. In many cases, you can check your DC motor's brushes while the motor is still in place, but removing it from the equipment gives you more room to work and see any possible issues. Step one, ensure your motor is disconnected from any power source. Step two, remove the carbon brush covers. You may even need to remove the enclosure to find the brushes. Check your motor's manual for help finding their location. Step three, remove the brush's electrical connection from the motor. Step four, remove the clips or springs holding the brushes in place. Step five, remove the carbon brush, making sure to note the direction of the beveled edge. The new brush will need to be installed the same way. I'm going to draw a small arrow on my motor to keep track for me. Inspect the old brush for uneven wear, burn marks or shiny rail marks on the side. Step six, while the brushes are out, take some time to inspect the motor's internals. Check the cavity for contaminants like dust, oil, water, or carbon buildup from the worn brushes. This buildup can cause an arc that'll ground out the motor that can be easily vacuumed with some help from low PSI compressed air. Inspect the commentator as well. Wear marks like Threading, grooving, and copper drag mean that the old brushes were of poor quality or contaminated with small pieces of copper from the commentator surface. Signs of flashover mean that the carbon brushes have been short-circuited. This can happen because of contamination as well. Any damage on the commentator will need to be repaired by a motor repair shop where they can machine and undercut the sections, or you may be better off replacing the whole motor. Step seven, install the new DC motor brush keeping the direction of the bevel in mind. When the rotor spins in one direction, the brushes smoothly drag across the surface. However, when the rotor spins in the other direction, the brushes are pushed across the commentator sections. This will at minimum make noise until the brush is properly seated. Step eight, fasten clips or springs. If your motor is equipped with springs, after installing the spring, pull back on the brush and then release. This allows the brush to seat on its own with the ideal amount of contact pressure. Repeat on all brushes. Your motor will have two to 12 brushes in total. Once you're done checking or replacing all your motor's carbon brushes, operate your motor at no load to test it. You can use some seating stone to help the brushes seat in quicker. This will allow the brushes to fully seat before running under load. To seat your carbon brushes means to have as much contact between the edge of the brush and the commutator. The more contact, the less chance of arcing, which would cause damage to the commentator. So next time you perform your scheduled maintenance on your brush DC electric motor, make sure you add checking brushes to your list. Learning to inspect, maintain, and replace the brushes and many other elements of your electric motor will help it last a long time and save you from unplanned downtime. 
If you have anything to add, have any questions, or have a suggestion for another topic for me to cover, leave me a comment below. Make sure you like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Next, we'll cover how to lubricate your electric motor. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, your source for industrial motors, gear reducers, controllers, and accessories across Canada. Thanks for watching. See you next time.